Good morning, gardeners. Uh, this is Anna in the Unity Church Unitarian Children's Garden. And I am surrounded by wonderful vines and plants. And I have something to show you. This is a very special jar. When I, well, I'll ask you if you can guess what it is. It's very big. It's got a metal clasp with the lid that opens up and it's quite heavy and uh, this is a clue why would it have a clip on top well I'll tell you that when it was first made it had a rubber seal across here and that's an important clue too because this is a canning jar and it's one that my mother used came all the way from Switzerland and I can still remember as a child summers when she would buy a bushel of peaches and then spend the rest of the day canning those peaches into jars like this. It was a lot of work. It was The kitchen was all steamy, but it smelled wonderfully of peaches. And months later, long after the peach harvest, we would eat those peaches. And the flavor of those peaches would remind us of the summer and the sunshine and bike rides and everything else that a child loves about summertime. So this is a very special jar. And as we light our flame today, our chalice, I want us to think about food and the abundance that the garden gives and the people who prepare that food for them, like my mother and my grandmother. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith, the warmth of love and the light of truth. Would you like to sing with me? Sing our chalice song. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing. Show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing. Show to us beauty, vision, and joy and we'll do joys and sorrows today. As I said, I'm thinking about the abundance in the garden. My garden at home is full of tomatoes and cucumbers and beans, and that is a wonderful thing, and we share those with other people. Um, on a negative, today is my last day in the garden with you, and I'm gonna miss this, and I'm gonna miss seeing all of you who tune into these lessons but I'll see you in church on the uh, sharing of the waters. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Do you like pickles? Dan has a story about somebody who really, really, really loves pickles more than anything else in the whole world. And I think you're gonna enjoy this. So, Dan. Today's story is called Pickles, Please, a Dilly of a Book by Andy Meyer. Pickles, Please. Alec Smart loved pickles. Big pickles, small pickles, round pickles, sliced pickles. Oh, he loved sweet ones, sour ones, salty ones, and spicy ones. He liked them made from cucumbers, tomatoes, beets, and onions, even watermelon. They were picklicious. <gasps> it isn't good to eat so many pickles, said Alec's mom. You'll grow up to be a small green man who smells like vinegar. I'll smell picklicious, replied Alec. Mm, stop eating so many pickles, remarked Alec's dad. You'll turn into a pickle someday. They'll call me picklicious, laughed Alec.
but not one of Alec's friends at school understood his fondness for pickles. Pickles won't fetch sticks. Oh, you can't play sports with them. They make terrible kites. You can't play music on them. They won't read you a bedtime story. I don't care. I still think they're picklicious, replied Alec. But he did care. Why doesn't anyone else like pickles as much as I do? Sighed Alec. One day, Alec saw a truck filled with cucumbers waiting for a light to turn green. Oh, that's the place for me, thought Alec, and he climbed up on the truck. And the author wants you all to know, never climb on a cucumber truck without calling home first. There was a sign on the road that said, Nichols Pickles, next exit. Soon Alex saw the Nickel Pickle Company. The driver honked, the gates opened, they rode into the factory. Oh, everything smelled of vinegar and garlic. <gasps> Suddenly Alec felt the truck shake. He was being lifted into the air. Oh my! He slid onto a belt with all the cucumbers. Alex and the cucumbers had a shower. They were sorted by size and then were about to drop in a very large pot of dill pickles. Will Alex really be pickled? <gasps> nope. Alec felt someone grab his shirt. He swung high in the air. Well, hello, said the woman. I'm Inspector 105. You do not look like a very promising pickle. I'm Alec Smart, said Alec. And why were you in a load of cucumbers? Asked Inspector 105. I think pickles are picklicious, explained Alec. Though no one else understands why. After some thought, she replied, hmm, come with me. Alec and Sp Inspector 105 walked through the factory. They finally came to a stop at a green door. This is the president of Nichols Pickles, she said. And his name is Niles Nichols. She knocked. Mm, come in, grumbled a voice. Mr. Nichols, this is Alex Smart, someone you should meet, said Inspector 105. Why are you here, Alex Smart, asked Mr. Nichols. Oh, I love pickles so much, but it can be lonely, explained Alec. And why do you love them so much? I love the way the sour ones make your mouth go like this. I love the spicy little balls in the jar. I love the way the last pickle floats in the juice and you have to spear it like a fisherman. I love that if you put your hands over your ears when you chew pickles, it sounds like thunder. Boom, crunch. But mostly, I love them because they are picklicious. Then all at once, 
Mr. Niles yelled, that's the word I've been looking for, yippee! Tomorrow we have a float in the first annual Pickle Day Parade, and we still don't have the right slogan for our banner. Thank you, Mr. Alec Smart. The next day, Alec marched at the front of the parade with the Nichols Pickle Company. Oh, his parents were very proud. His friends were very surprised. And the next day, Alec's end of the lunch table was very crowded with friends who smelled of vinegar and garlic. They're pickalicious. And with that, our story is told out. Thank you, Dan. That was wonderful. Um, when my mother canned peaches, it was hard work, took a lot of time. The kitchen was really, really hot. And in the story, the pickles were made in a factory, but it was also hot, hard work to make those pickles and send them out to a store. So it makes me wonder, why do people do that if it is such uncomfortable work? And I think the answer, um, could come from anybody who's a gardener. These are cucumbers that came out of my garden and a few from the church garden. And as you can see, there's quite a bit there. Why don't we eat them fresh? We do. I put them into salads, I make um, gazpacho soup, I do all this sort of stuff, but there's always more than we can eat fresh. And so it would be really nice if we had a way to save them. When we put them in the refrigerator, that helps. That keeps them for a week, maybe even two weeks. But what if I wanted to eat them in the winter? In the winter, my garden is brown and dead. Here in Minnesota, we can grow lots of food in the summer, but winter is a problem. And this has been a problem for people for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. You have times of abundance and you have times of scarcity and hardship. And so people long ago needed to find a way to save the food that they had in the summer. One way to do that is by drying, and the Native Americans and people around the globe did a lot of that. They would dry meat, they would dry berries, they had nuts, and then they would use that to, they'd grind it up and they'd make pemmican that they then made soup out of later or just munched on like a stick of beef jerky. Um, so drying works. One of the other things that, that people discovered was if you add a lot of salt, or if you are rich enough to have sugar and you added a lot of sugar, that that would help preserve the food. And that's what we do. We, when we make pickles, we add sugar and salt. And when we make jam, we add a whole bunch of sugar. And that preserves the berries. So those are ways that we have preserved food. And it works. And there's a reason for that. If I just had this cucumber sitting on my kitchen counter, it would eventually get soft and then slimy and then really, really gross. Do you remember the story about the pumpkin and about the decay? Well, there are bacteria in the air and there are fungus spores in the air and when they land on food, it makes it eventually rot. So those bacteria that were very, very important in our compost pile and did us a favor by turning banana peels and apple cores and weeds into wonderful compost are the same bacteria that spoil our food. So when we create an environment that those bacteria and fungi can't live in, then we can preserve our food. So I am going to, um, in a little bit, I'm going to show you how to make some pickles. But there's another part of the story that I want you to think about. Long ago there was a man named Amerigo Vespucci and he grew up in Florence, which is in present day 
Italy. And he grew up at a time called the Renaissance when everybody was interested in science and they were inventing different kinds of clocks and watches and ways to uh, measure time and measure the day. And they also were figuring out how to navigate. And so in amongst this flowering of science and technology and art and literature, people started exploring and they knew that they were riches to the east and somebody some people got the idea that maybe if they went the other way they could get there faster well they didn't get all the way to india but they did get to north and south america and these explorers did that with all these tools that were developed amerigo vespucci went on a couple of those voyages partly because he was a merchant and he would provision the ships but he was also really really interested in geography and navigation. And he wrote about those things. And um, one of his descriptions of this new wonderful world that they had discovered was printed and everybody read it. And it's one of the reasons that today we live in America. The reason he got started in all of this had a lot to do with pickles because the sailors, when they first got on these boats, you know, nobody had traveled on a boat for months and months and months. This was the first time. And partway through the voyage, people started getting sick. They were very weak. They lost their hair. Their teeth fell out. And a lot of people died. And doctors were mystified. They didn't know what was going on. Eventually, people figured out it was the food they were eating, or rather, the food they were not eating. They had flour and um, salt, and they had fat that they could pack into barrels, and that's what they were eating. Can you guess what was missing? Vegetables. Vegetables. Vegetables that are rich in all kinds of vitamins, including vitamin C. Today we know that those sailors suffered from a nutritional disease called scurvy. And once they started taking vegetables with them, um, long voyages became possible. And the way they did it was by making pickles. So let's go see, we're gonna move over to the table and we're gonna see how you make pickles. So what do we do with all our surplus uh, cucumbers? We're gonna make pickles out of them. There are dill pickles, there are sweet pickles, there are hot pickles, there are pickled beans, dilly beans, there are people pickle, people pickle, cauliflower, and all sorts of stuff. So uh, I've posted recipes online, but feel free to experiment because it's really, really fun. And the original way of pickling was simply to add a lot of salt to the vegetables and kind of sweat out the moisture. Um, that involves a fermentation process that I'm going to bypass because today we have got refrigerators and these are refrigerator pickles and these are a little easier to make. I have my cucumbers. My other ingredients are sugar, salt, and this is canning and pickling salt and it's important that you use this because other kinds of salt often have additives and although it doesn't affect the flavor it'll make the brine cloudy and rather unattractive. There's vinegar and there is celery seed and mustard seed that I put in my sweet pickles and then of course there are the cucumbers themselves and an onion. So I'm gonna, I've already washed them. Cucumbers, when you pick them, have little spines on them and that's to protect them just like the rest of the plant that has spines from being eaten by rabbits and stuff like that. It doesn't always work, but it kind of works. Um, I take my pickles, my cucumbers that are not yet pickles, and I slice them. The smaller they are, the fewer seeds they have. If you look at these larger ones, they've got some seeds developing, and you want to go for the smaller ones. Save the bigger ones for gazpacho or something like that. I slice them because I they, they could be whatever shape you want, but I like to slice them because then they get nice and crisp and they fit on a burger really well and they are easy to add to tuna fish and whatever else I want when I'm done. And I take my, I'm going to save that one, I'm going to take my onion 
And I find rings a little harder to work with, so I cut it in half. And then I have kind of a half moon shape. We'll see, that might be about right. I'm going to take my mother's canning jar. And for these, this jar works great because I don't have a rubber seal. I can't use it. I can't actually use it to preserve food at room temperature. But for refrigerator pickles, it works great. And I kind of put pickles, put the cucumbers in, and I layer some of the onions, which also get yummy in this process, until I get up to the top. And that half an onion, I think, is going to be just about right. And if I have a choice, I'll pick the smaller ones over the bigger ones. Kind of shake it, make sure they're settled in there. I've um, got a few more here that I think are going to fit. And the rest of my onions. So, they're not pickles yet. What I need now is the brine, the salt, and the sugar solution. And for that, I'm going to use this bowl, and I'm going to measure out one cup of white vinegar, because I'm doing this just as a, in the jar. If you had a whole lot of pickles, you can quadruple this recipe, and you can put them in four jars if you have that much. But there's my vinegar. I found that the wasps were very interested in that vinegar. <laughs> um, this is sugar, half a cup. And one teaspoon of my fancy canning pickling salt. Put that in there. You can see it's clumping because it doesn't have the anti-clumping stuff. This is celery seed and mustard seed. And they're all kind of sticking in there. I'll take that and I'll stir it. And when this is all dissolved, I will pour it over my cucumbers. And they won't be pickles for about 24 hours. They've got to kind of absorb the flavors. And what you'll find is that the uh, liquid inside, the water that's inside the cucumbers will kind of seep out and you'll have the pickles will change color from this bright green to a more olive green. Um, but they will absorb the flavor of the spices in here and the sugar and the vinegar. And I just pour this over the top. Put the lid on it, clip it shut, and put it in the refrigerator. Ideally, this should come up to all the way. This jar is a European jar, and the recipe is for an American quart, so it's not quite enough. I'll mix some more when I get back home. But you can see that that will be delicious bread and butter pickles in about 24 hours, and I'm going to eat them tomorrow. <laughs> They will keep that way in the refrigerator for quite a while, um, months in fact, but they never last that long in my house. So I hope you have fun with that. So let's come back to our candle. At the end of our time together today, our last day in the garden together, um, let us be thankful for abundance that we can share and for the technology that allows us to save our food for another day. Going to blow out our candle. As we extinguish this flame, we know that the light of truth and the warmth of love go with us in our heart. Have a wonderful day.